Alright, today we are checking out a couple Goodman GSH systems and GSH is R22. It's a 140 which means 14 sear. Uh, <clears throat> it could be 15 sear would match with a proper uh, evaporator and GXV which is probably the case. But we're doing a little bit of maintenance on it so this one's not cooling as well as it once did. So we'll be checking refrigerant charge which is a common problem with Goodmans of this age. So we shut the power off and we're going to start checking. Alright, now we're going to check check the contactor, <clears throat> the holding coil, to make sure it's uh, higher than 10 and less than 20 ohms. And so we're going to set up our meter to do that. I kind of got it wedged in there on the terminals. Take one side off, to make sure we don't get any back feeding resistance. As a, that was a suggestion to me on my prior videos, which is, it's, a, it's good. Uh, you don't want to risk anything, so. Measuring each side. 18.4 so we're all square with the contactor. We have a 60 slash 5 dual run capacitor and on our hermetic side we have 59.6 which is good. And on our fan side we have 5.3 which is fine as well so this one's good to go. Put our wires back on here. On good one it's all pretty much the same. The fan wires brown terminals are actually have symbols on them but if you send them if the symbols are worn away you can usually go by how many ports there are for your wires see the one yellow there is on the herm that's for the compressor and usually there's three available male ports right there then our red and purple that's for the common and then our brown is for the fan Usually the common has four ports. Uh, not always the case, but uh, that can confirm your suspicions if you're checking them. All right, we're in the crawl space with the air handler, a Goodman AEPF 4260. That is a variable speed air handler. We got our external TXV kit that goes on there to achieve 15 sear. It, it may have been a tax credit thing. I don't remember if they did them in 2009 or was that just 2010. But more than likely, that's what it was. I'm going to open up a little bit of a hole on this plenum back here on the return side so I can take a look at the coil just to make sure we're all clear on the coil. I don't want to check a charge on that might have a uh, dirty coil because it'll thaw off the charge. It's hard to see, but the coil is pretty clean. No problems there. Just the regular old rust marks and things like that. So we are squared away as far as charging. That's not a very good sign right there. You see definitely water has been standing in this unit, draining out. And unfortunately when the Goodman variable speed air handler's left hand discharge, that's what the water has been standing in. The module for that motor. Whether or not we have a problem with that motor is, well, I don't know yet. But we can see why. The board, I replaced it. Uh, years ago because uh, they had a flooding issue and the motor was still fine but I don't know if this has happened again since then you can see where it's been standing in here whether from a blocked up drain or from a coil freezing all right let's turn our air handler back on with the meter attached maybe let's see Well, that sounds fantastic, doesn't it? It ramps up, but there's definitely some hesitation there at the beginning. Maybe due to that module being damaged by water, but not sounding as good as it would have the first day, that's for sure. The blower board. up a little bit more.
taking a look at those heat strips too. I hear some jingling in there. I'm making sure we don't have a problem. These strips look fine. I don't see any problems with them. Could just be the effect of the air blowing down on them. Just wanted to make sure. Better safe than sorry. All right, we're gonna turn the uh, variable speed blower back on with some static on it because I'm gonna put the door back in place, sort of. I'm gonna hold it up there. So we're gonna see if the amperage differs and how much it differs. Let me just turn this back on. Here, ramping up. And I have it on stinking micro or ohms. Let me turn it back down. It's running at a real low level right now. It'll ramp back up again. Here, get louder. The amperage draw gets higher as it ramps up. in there, I think is what we're hearing, rattling around a little bit, and that's one of the problems, it's not the heat strips, there's a little, I don't, I don't even know what it's for really, uh, if it's supposed to stiffen the air handler, but I see we got up to about an amp and three quarters, kind of settled in right around there, okay. One of the things you can see under the air handler here, take as clues, especially even in the crawl space, you see all these ripples right here where it's been dripping. Either because, well the insulation goes all to hell after it floods, pretty much loses all of its R value, so it'll probably sweat from here on after. Uh, <clears throat> which is a strong proponent for freeze controls, uh, like your TAM7 air handlers have now, the trained ones that we looked at, well, have freeze controls on them so the evaporator looks like it's going to freeze, it shuts down. It's a great thing because pretty much after that your insulation is shot. But uh, I think everybody sells a freeze control if you want to bother to put one in. I think it's a good idea. Okay, now we're going to check the uh, subcooling on this unit. It has that Goodman TXV on it. And Goodman says 7 to 9 degree subcooling on their TXV. <clears throat> right now. We're at 6.1, so that's not very far off at all. I'm going to monitor this because I've seen a number of these TXVs turn to crap after a while. Um, so we'll see how she's looking after a few minutes and uh, how we calculate the subcooling of the unit. And subcooling basically is the refrigerant is sent to the condenser coil, optical coil right here. <clears throat> how far below the condensing temperature for that liquid? is it cool? And that cooling beyond the condensation temperature is sub-cooling. So that's why it's called sub-cooling. So if it condenses at 100, and 100 degrees, let's say, and the gas coming out on a liquid line is 95 degrees, then you have 5 extra degrees of sub-cooling, so 5 degrees sub-cooling. That's how you uh, calculate that. We'll let it sit for a few minutes and see what she does. Here's our 4-ton compressor running about 11 amps here. Not too low. As you see with the low charge, it, it'll get pretty low as far as amperage too. Uh, rated load amps, 18.3. You're not going to get that out of, uh, unless there's a problem, 18.3. So I would expect, you know, 60, 75% of that load on here, which would be something like 12 or 13. So we're not too far off of what that is. I am concerned that the TXV's being a pain in the ass today and not doing his job like a lot of them did. Uh, we got three degrees of subcooling and it's I'm sure the superheat is sky high right now. So I've got my doubts about the TXV working correctly. Let's go ahead and see the fan amperage. 
1.3, 1 1.34. I'll see what we're supposed to be running at. 1.5, so we're squared away with the fan. So the compressor and fan amperage is uh, okay. Just got some doubts about the uh, TXV and the charge here. So we're gonna let it sit a few more minutes and check it again. Okay, the unit's not running anymore, but this is pretty much exactly where we were at anyway. Basically pumping it down to zero. Uh, the low pressure switch would have cut it off. I'm surprised it hadn't already. Uh, I cut it off, personally. Uh, you see ice on the accumulator. Things you would see during a recovery or a pump down. Uh, <clears throat> ice forming. And the reason for this is the TXV is bad. Uh, it closes off and uh, doesn't allow any refrigerant into the evaporator instead of regulating the refrigerant like it should be doing. So we're going to be getting a replacement TXV. Uh, we're going to replace that motor module too uh, since we're doing both of those things and I'll be doing that at a later date. But that is where we're at. That's why we got no cooling out of this machine. And uh, if you see this sort of thing from a TXV system, pumping things down rapidly, uh, you can check out that very cause. Uh, <clears throat> if it were low refrigerant, you'd see you know, subcooling change. You see the TXV trying to pour more um, refrigerant into the evaporator to compensate for the low charge, but in this case, the evaporator pressure was falling, falling, falling all the way to zero, indicating the TXV had failed and shut and uh, wasn't opening properly.